Hi, I'm Daryl Tank with Five Pencil Method. And over on the Five Pencil Method community, Leticia has gone ahead and posted a wonderful start, and or however far she wants to take this drawing, uh, of this uh, woman. And I asked her if I could please use it as an example, because at the stage it's in, I can see some things that I would like to remind others about. And there are some little structural things that I want to make sure that uh, uh, you can see clearly that uh, you want to take into consideration so you have good proportion, have a chance to get the proper uh, point of view and perspective, and uh, and take a look at some of the angles. We have a wonderful opportunity the way she has this set up. She's taken the liberty to, to uh, rotate her picture a little bit so she gets a little different angle. But if you keep this consistent with your drawing, you'll always be able to take a, an opportunity of comparing uh, you know, links and spaces and, and uh, uh, using your divider and your straight edges for different things. But one of the things I want to pay attention to right now is the center line. And as we follow the center line, it's a little different because we're looking up. We're looking up underneath her lip, under her chin, under the nose, under the upper eyelid. And so that center line changes quite a bit as it travels along the contours. And so up here, I would imagine, I'm just going to make a line in Photoshop here. And uh, we'll see how that changes and conforms as we travel on these contours. I think that is probably pretty much like that, even though it looks like this could be the center. I don't think it is. I think that it actually comes over here, it conforms, goes to the inside of the mouth, and this comes back out, maybe a little wider than what uh, we see in the picture. And then it would go back under and conform to that part that's underneath the lip, and then it comes back out again to that portion of the chin. So as we see this, it gives us a chance to have something that we can measure now from that to one of the edges of her face where we don't see it anymore. And we can tell how much her face is turned and have an opportunity to have that, that reference point that helps us capture, again, the proper perspective. So now if I were to copy that over here in the drawing, I might make some light little reference uh, to that uh, center line over here so that I can see how things change, see if it's different. And as I come down here, and try to duplicate some of this. It comes back down to the center of her teeth, and then it comes back out again here, and it goes back underneath. I have a chance now to measure over and also see how maybe how large that part of the lip is compared to my reference. You can see angles. Take advantage of the angles. If you have this reference in the same angle as you're drawing, you're going to be able to see how much of that lip and what angle to make it. So this comes over, comes back to the, that part of her face. Instead of coming uh, a little bit maybe uh, sharp and having this like it's almost uh, separate from her face, we want to have it flow into that part and come back out again. And then that gives us an idea of how far from that edge of where it goes around and that side of her chin and that part of her mouth, how much of this we would see. Well, this would probably be quite a bit less. And so we have a chance to compare angles. The angle we see for this part of the other side of the uh, philtrum, that part that goes around and out of our sight, we can compare that angle. And instead of coming a little straighter up and down like it is in the drawing, we might have a little bit more of an angle. Well, if we do that, then we're going to probably add more to the lip than what is in here. And by adding more to the lip, it is actually giving us a little bit more fullness. And it is actually narrowing this part we see past the face, which is probably just a little bit more accurate. And so following that center line and establishing that gives us a wonderful opportunity to create that structure that is probably a little bit more accurate and then have other things we can judge it by. What is past is really important. How much of the face we see past a certain point is really important. And uh, if we don't uh, pay attention to some of these things, then we're going to start changing the point of view. We're going to have things that, are, that actually become conflicts. And uh, then we have, maybe this comes down a little bit of a point. I don't see that as much here. So paying attention to some of those little things might make a difference. It looks like maybe this is a little bit 
a little bit too much. Now, I realize this is my own uh, interpretation. It's how I am seeing it. But it's good for us to stop and think about these things, have every opportunity for us to learn how to see what we're drawing so that we can capture some of those things that are so slight that sometimes they can get away from us and we'll miss capturing the person, actually uh, documenting the character and the personality of someone if we're not really careful. So take advantage of everything you possibly can. These are all uh, available to all of us if we have good reference and a little bit of uh, a knowledge of, of how to compare an angle or a curve is going to make a lot of difference in capturing the right proportion and again the perspective. So thank you Leticia for allowing me to be able to use this and I look forward to seeing either this finished or other work that you're going to do and uh, thank you again.